Hi, I'm Dan from Bird Dog. I'm CEO and co-founder of the company. We've been around for about five and a half years and we founded ourselves uh, with NDI. So it's a technology that allows you to send audio and video over regular computer networks. And really what we tried to do is turn that into a whole range of products that enable production to go from what we'd normally use a SDI or regular cables and allow the flexibility of computer networking. So fast forward over the last five years, we've built out a whole range of cameras, converters and software to make all sorts of workflows work uh, for AV, live production, as well as for education and uh, sports. At NAB this year, 2022, we are really excited with the products that we've announced, as well as some firmware updates that we've done. So every single product that we've ever released gets a new firmware update that not only brings it up to the latest NDI formats, but also allows a whole bunch of extra features. Things like uh, waveforms and vector scopes for cameras, but also uh, things like uh, NDI Genlock that allows us to synchronize cameras better and, uh, and really just bringing all of our products right up to the very latest, which is really exciting, I think, for everybody. Also, augmented reality and XR is something that's been really exciting as far as where the field is going to. And all of our cameras now get 3D support, which means that any 3D uh, spatial information that we've got on the camera can now be interpreted for graphics and things. Uh, probably one of the biggest things we announced though is Silicon 2, and that allows all of our products to not only work in a local network with NDI, but also allow us to go anywhere on the internet over our cloud services, as well as working with other formats like SRT and NDI HX. And that means that effectively any of our cameras or any of our converters can be anywhere in the world, completely interconnected and managed and work all together. Uh, in terms of hardware, we had three really big announcements. One of them is the Open Gear card. Open Gear is a modular system that allows you to put in cards from many different vendors. And with Bird Dog, we're the first people to have a multi-channel NDI Open Gear card. That allows you to plug that in with a, a chassis and have multiple channels. In one two rack unit chassis, you can have up to 40 channels of 12G SDI to encode or decode. And keeping in mind that Silicon 2 format, we can take video in from, for example, SRT, and stream that out to NDI, or we can integrate with the existing SDI infrastructure to be that gateway within a building. Another feature that we, or another product that we announced is our Bird Dog P110 and P120 PTZ cameras. Now these cameras are really game changing. The size of them is tiny, the picture quality is amazing, but the features we've really put in that to allow for production is really killer for it. So it has a screen on the front so you can see things like IP addresses and the configuration of the camera. It's got a giant tally uh, that goes over the top called a Mohawk tally, which means you can see that anywhere uh, around the facility so you can know which camera is live. And really just the image quality and the level of features and functions that we have supported in that camera is untouchable in terms of price and performance. So we also announced recently LTS, and it's a program we've been working on actually behind the scenes for 12 months. Uh, LTS in computers normally is, uh, refers to long-term support. And for us, it means that for our products, we started out by producing one product, of course, as every company does, and now we've got 28 hardware products. And each one of those had its own firmware, its own you know, individual features and functions. So we found that as that product range got bigger and bigger, the management, not only for us as engineering, but also for customers, became a lot more tricky. What version of firmware did you need for what product? So what we did is really completely reinvent the whole firmware structure. So we now only have three firmware packages, one for cameras, one for converters, and one for our AV products. And so when you install it, it automatically works out which model it is and ensures that you've got the right things running on there. But more importantly for us, as we introduce new features or if there's any fixes or any changes that need to happen, it's far quicker to make that happen because there's only three firmware packages that get interrupted. So video over IP has been around notionally for quite a long time. If you think yeah, there's YouTube, there's Netflix, they're all video over IP. The difference is with what we're doing, it's about live and it's replacing things like SDI cables where yeah, imagine you're in a sports stadium and you've got a, um, a, a big screen that's happening and you need to have someone talking and having that happen live. So that's been a real challenge and really NDI with a couple of other formats out there, are the things that have changed that in the last couple of years. Video over IP really exploded over the last couple of years with COVID in the fact that people couldn't be in the same location. So the convenience of using a computer network to connect to different devices really made that uh, work. And it saved a whole bunch of uh, production companies and a whole lot of shows and allowed them to still go on air. Where things are really moving forward though is cloud. So video over IP gets your video onto a network. It doesn't get it onto the internet though. And so that's where cloud services are really coming up. If you think about what people are using cloud for and internet for at the moment, there's formats like SRT, which allow you to send video from one location to another. And we really embrace that with our new Silicon 2 formats. But I think probably cloud as a production system is really where it's heading. So 
instead of having computers that are in different locations, actually having scalable production systems that are housed in the cloud with Amazon Web Services, for example, or Google Cloud Platform. And that means you can scale up and scale down as a company needs it. And that's really where video over IP is heading. You know, from local networks to internet connected, but then to really scalable within the cloud. So at Bird Dog, I think we've got a number of advantages over other NDI uh, formats. But first and foremost uh, is that NDI is kind of a road that every product can work on. So all Bird Dog products work with NDI. What we do is uh, the way we process our video uh, makes our products different. So from a practical point of view, it means that we can do things like multi-channel products, like our quad and our open gear cards, where we can process more than one stream of video at once. Uh, that's due to the IP or the way we process that video. It has a number of other benefits as well. Our hardware can be far more uh, uh, simplified in terms of how complex all of the chips need to be. That means less power and less heat. And so environmentally, that's really great. But probably on a practical sense, the way we actually process is fundamentally different compared to any other NDI device. Because when you've got a video frame, for example, an HD frame is 1920 by 1080. As we get eight lines of that 1080 lines in, we're already turning that into NDI. And that means that we're working as fast as the video frame is coming in. For all other hardware-based NDI production, and software for that matter, it needs to get that whole frame before you can even start processing it. So in a live environment where latency matters, that really ensures that you've got the lowest possible latency. And that's really the, the bird dog difference.